Hello, my friends, and welcome back. <sighs> Today, we're taking a look at the fourth edition of what I like to call Fat Shaming Fridays, where we take a look at various responses to this. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. I really love these fat shaming stories. I'm not laughing at the fact that people were fat shamed, but instead laughing at the ridiculousness of the society that we live in. You ever had somebody come up to you and just say some off the wall stuff and then later on you're like, I can't believe they said that. <laughs> when you're like sitting home alone watching TV, it just comes to you like what that crazy guy on the subway said to you and you're like, wait a minute, that was nuts. And then you just start laughing about it. Even if it was negative against you, you have to laugh at that person because they clearly have the problem. You're just sitting here chilling and they're giving you a hard time. I think there might be a little bit of exaggeration going on within the fat acceptance community, so take all these stories with a grain of salt. We all know that any time a story ends with, and then everybody clapped, that it was very real and it totally happened. Let us prepare ourselves for the fat shaming scenarios with the applying of comb to mustache. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. So when I first started making videos on this account, I was labeling my videos as plus size. And in the comments, I was getting a lot of backlash from other plus size women telling me that there's no way I'm plus size. I don't look like it. I'm lying about my size, yada, yada, yada. Not fat enough to be considered plus size. Did you ask Fat Sapphic Bro if you're allowed to be plus size? We all know that they are the authority on this matter. You have to ask them first. I'm still waiting for them to approve the form that I submitted, inquiring as to whether or not I could call myself a skinny mini. We'll see what they say. So even though I knew I was a plus size woman, I started labeling my videos as midsize to try and respect the plus size community and make sure that the other plus size women's voices were being heard. Then I started receiving a lot of hate for hashtagging my videos as midsize, saying there's no way I'm midsize, I'm too big, but... <laughs> So initially they said, you're not big enough to be plus size. So you're like, all right, I'll call myself a midsize. And then you start labeling yourself midsize. And then other people who likely call themselves midsize are like, what? You're not midsize, you're plus size. There's no winning. Blah, blah, blah. So I was frustrated as any woman would be. I'm just trying to find my group of women that I fit in with. I'm too small to be plus size. I'm too big to be midsize. I don't fit in anywhere. What the f was I supposed to do? I don't know, maybe you could join a group of people based on your interest or some other intrinsical value other than the way that you look. You know, be a little be a little deeper than that, you know, maybe. If you go around trying to fit in with groups based on just the way that you look, then you're going to get what you get. These are very superficial people. What do you expect? So I made a TikTok simply stating the toxicity that lies within the straight community, the mid-size community, and the plus-size community. And when I tell you that a very known plus-size creator took my words, flipped them around to make me say things that I didn't even say, and dragged me through the mud. I'm not joking. Uh-oh. You didn't piss off Fat Sapphic Bro, did you? Oh, ho, 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 ho. you don't want to get on their bad side. You don't want to get on their bad side. She received thousands of comments on those videos that she made about me dragging my name through the dirt. Women were on there calling me a shitty person, calling me fat phobic. They were appalled that I would call out the toxicity that lies within these communities. Yeah, how dare you? You may as well be a skinny mini, you thin mint, with all that thin toxicity. When they were literally proving my point. They showed the exact ugliness that I was talking about within the plus size community and I... That's funny. That's almost like if you were like, man, people within the fat acceptance community sure are violent. And then they respond with, what? I'm not violent. And then they just proceed to beat the crap out of you. You're like, what? You're proving my point. Stop striking me. I was shocked that they did not see that they were doing the exact same thing that I was talking about. You were shocked. Oh, I guess you are new to this movement. And this other creator got applause, round of applause, snaps for her. Oh, she did such a good thing. When in all reality, without knowing it, she was part of the toxic behavior that I was talking about. So nowadays, I don't give a f I label myself as plus size, I label myself as mid size, and I quite often make videos talking about how I am plus size on the bottom and mid size on top. Because at the end of the day, nobody knows you better than you know you. Nobody knows how many fat phobic experiences you've had, how many things you've missed out on because of your weight and size. And you don't owe an explanation to anybody about the things that you've experienced and encountered. 
Except for Fat Sapphic Bro, you do owe them an explanation. Or maybe Splotch Maker. So, I'll say it again for the people in the back because nowadays I am not f scared. There are literally toxic people in every single community of people. So that means that there's toxic people within the plus size, the mid size, the straight size community, within the body positive movement, within the body neutrality movement. And at the end of the day, just because you think you can look at someone and know everything there is to know about them based off of their size, weight, or anything like that, you can't and you don't. All right, well, you know where there's not toxic people? on my Discord and within my subscribers. All of my subscribers are the best. I recommend that you subscribe and join us on Discord. Here's a link. If she's surprised by the toxicity, she must be new around these parts. Next. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. So a couple of years ago, we were living in Kent and um, a group of me and my friends had gone into London and it was Pride. So we just stood on the pavement and it was a bit on in the evening now so everyone was rightly drunk and whatever but it was it was fantastic there were flags everywhere there were people everywhere it was just brilliant and it was the same day that england had like i quote me if this is wrong but it was like the world cup or something so all the football people were out as well and um, or the euros england had qualified for something they'd won so it was just this wonderful sort of party atmosphere in the street between the LGBTQI plus community, the football community, everyone was just together. It was brilliant. And we were just stood on the pavement and all of a sudden I heard in my ear somebody go, look at the size of you. All right, forgive me if I get this wrong, but I believe this woman is Irish and I believe that's a very Irish insult. Look at the size of you. Sorry, that was a terrible Irish accent, I'm sure. And it'll be even more hilarious if this isn't even Irish and I'm getting it completely wrong. I'm sorry. Out of nowhere, I was just stood having a conversation with my friends. And when I turned and looked, it was um, a fella. He may have been about 20, little hot pants, glitter on his face. He looked friggin' fantastic. Hot pants and glitter on his face. He looked fantastic. And it was very obvious, by the way, he was dressed and he was carrying flags and different things, that he was also there for pride. Ah, more fat shaming within the gay community. I've heard that this is fairly prevalent. What do you guys think about the phenomenon of fat shaming within the gay community? Is it prevalent? Is it constant? Now, no one else heard this other than me, but my friend Laura, who is five foot nothing and an absolute bulldog when it comes to her friends, went, what did he say to you? And then she started swinging on the guy. So I told her and went, ignore it. It's just another idiot. Laura wasn't gonna have that. Before I could even tell her to stop, she had run down the street. And tackled the guy and started raining down elbows on him. Man, your friend is a real one. Tapped this young man on the shoulder and went, uh, excuse me, you do realize you're at pride? You do realize you've just come for a member of your own community or an ally? How do you expect people to support you in your community? Why is she saying that you're an ally? Is fat acceptance part of the LGBT ABC uh, community now? And also, if that's not the case and like you also happen to be gay, are you guys not allowed to disagree on anything because you're all gay? That's interesting. I thought that, you know, each individual has their own beliefs and everything and being gay has little to do with who you are. If you're gonna come after them, his friends were absolutely mortified. <laughs> he didn't give a monkeys at all. He didn't get monkeys at all? Wait, what? He didn't give a monk case at all. He didn't get a monk case. Um, what? Did I swear to God? So yeah, I was fat shamed at Pride. And I felt that that on its own was sad enough that someone would come for someone else in what is supposed to be a really safe space. But I also felt it was a double whammy because at that, that day in London, anyone who was there will remember we came out of the theater, we were seeing a matinee and the streets were just lit. There were um, cannons going off, confetti, the football people were cheering, the pride people were with them. It was like the most inclusive sort of day. It Unless you're straight, right? <laughs> then it's not so inclusive, huh? It was wonderful to see everyone all together. And that one idiot just had to say something. I will never for the life of me understand why people feel the need to come up to fat people and remind them that they're fat. Okay, I agree with that. You shouldn't go around calling fat people fat. Uh, they know they're fat, and that's also mean and bullying. But you thought that it was a safe space because it was a pride event? Like you're not allowed to question anybody for any of their actions or the way they look or anything like that within a pride event? 
I think you might be putting like mythical connotations onto what pride really is. You're like, it's a wonderful place. Utopia, basically. I don't know, man. I think it's just a bunch of people getting together and celebrating whatever kind of crap that they're into. I don't know why you're putting all these mythical connotations on it. Next. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. I once went to an all-you-can-eat buffet, and when the bill came, I noticed they charged me twice. I questioned it and said why, and they said I ate too much. Really? That's what happened? Dude, stop. Stop! That's a hilarious story that you made up, but uh, you definitely made that up. You know that overweight people go to buffets all the time, and they eat a ton. And you know the owner of the buffet is watching the whole thing go down from behind one of those one-way mirrors or something? They're like, oh crap, he's going back for another plate. Can we afford this? Have we done the math on this? What's our overhead looking like today? Next. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. Okay, this isn't the wildest way, but it is the freshest, hasn't it? Literally just happened. So I was at the hospital because I have a skin irritation from shaving and I wanted to check it up and fix it anyways. And you know how before your consultation you have to like check you were in the hospital because you have skin irritation from shaving. You sure you should have gone to the hospital for that? You probably should have called 911 uh, and had them come wheel you out in an ambulance for such an emergency. Your blood pressure and your weight and your height. You could have been freaking checking your blood pressure and your weight and your height. Like, I'm going for my neck. I'm no doctor. Okay, but I'm going for my neck. Why is my weight and height? Did you say that you're a doctor? I'm, I'm just here for my skin irritation on my neck. I'm a doctor. I'm not sure if he was saying that he was a doctor or what. The nurse is like helping me whenever she's super nice. We have a great conversation. She's like, okay, now I'm gonna check your hat and wait. So I step on a scale and she looks down and she goes, <laughs> too much. <laughs> no, she didn't. Dude, that never happened. But if it did, that's hilarious, honestly. I'm not laughing at your pain. I'm laughing at the hilarity of that. You step on the scale and the nurse looks down. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. She just keeps saying no and pointing to the door. Like, get out, get out. The weight of human beings that we can treat is from here to here. Uh, you're right about there. You're right outside of the range. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And I might call the police. <laughs> and I tried to play a clue. I was like, my height, I know, six foot two king. <laughs> right. Yeah, you try to play it off and say that it was your height that was too much. Stop. Hey, and she goes, no, your weight. I know. And I was like, no, I know, miss. I know. I'm just big boned. I'm working on it. And I'm you're just big boned and you're working on it. You working to decrease the size of those bones uh, somehow? You're like, I'm working on getting osteoporosis so my bones don't weigh as much, okay? Give me a break. The fat ass. I didn't say that, but I do, I do. But no, actually, I was like, oh, I have big bones and I'm working on it, I'm working on it. <laughs> Stop saying that you have big bones and you're working on it. <laughs> the doctor's just like, all right, man, we get it. You have big bones, but are you working on it? You need to reduce the size of those bones, okay? I'm gonna need your bone density to decrease by about 50% by the time I see you in here next. And she goes, no. Okay. Okay. And now's my visit to the hospital. Always beautiful, always triggering. I'm in there. Okay. Okay. I don't believe you. <laughs> How unprofessional is that nurse? She just looks down at the scale. Whoa, no, this will not do, sir. How many times are we going to experience fat phobia at the doctor's office? Like I said, these next couple of videos are going to be a little bit shorter. To make sure you keep up to date with all the latest developments, why don't you subscribe? Not only does it help the channel, you'll be doing yourself a huge favor. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Don't you want to treat yourself to a subscription to my channel? Also, please be sure to click the like button. It really helps the algorithm. We need to make sure that this uh, art as I call it, reaches the masses. Wouldn't you love for me to show up in your grandma's feed one day randomly? She'd be like, who the hell is this idiot? Get him off the TV. That's not a TV, grandma, that's a phone. Yeah, get this idiot off the little TV that I carry around in my pocket. I'm sick of looking at him. <laughs> oh, grandma, you better watch your mouth or we'll send you to a home. Just kidding. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.